What's up, Coaster Community? Millennium Force Man back with another video. Today's video, I'm going to be doing uh, a hype skill for future coasters. So basically, uh, I'm going to be looking at some future coasters uh, and saying if I think they're overhyped or underhyped or hyped fairly, or uh, there's a bunch of categories. Um, and just my opinion about them. Obviously, uh, these aren't like real opinions because nobody has even ridden these yet. Uh, everybody could be wrong, so uh, we don't really know. But um, we do know that like some are obviously more hyped than others, and this is just what I think um, about it. What I think about these coasters, if I think uh, they, they look better than people say, or if they look worse than people say, or if they look you know just as good as people uh, are hyping them up to be. So uh, just um, kind of like you know uh, how, how this works, uh, the categories. So we got seven categories, uh, and, and ignore my uh, Hyperion picture over there, it just rhymes with hype, or it sounds like hype, I don't know, and it was a coaster that was very, it was hyped up a lot, and it never really met the hype, so just just pretend that doesn't exist, but, so our categories, we have seven categories, we have very overhyped, overhyped, slightly overhyped, fairly hyped, slightly underhyped, underhyped, and very underhyped, and obviously, I don't need to explain what each of those means, because they literally say what they mean, so, yeah, now hopefully you understand, but. Let's get into the uh, first coaster. I believe we have like 16 coasters. Um, so the first one uh, is Velocicoaster. And this is the one that really got me to uh, start this list. Um, it was just a coaster that I couldn't uh, handle uh, it being overhyped so much. And I don't think it's just because like I have different opinions on like the type of ride. Um, I just think that people don't really know the truth about Velocicoaster yet. Um, because no, one's, no one has ridden it. No one knows really what forces it's... Or, like, you know, the everyday person doesn't know what forces it's going to pull. But uh, from what I've heard um, from, like, Amusement Insider, uh, the forces are really weak uh, in the second half. I've heard that the top half is the only one that pulls negative 1 Gs. Um, so that's that's kind of disappointing because uh, you have coasters like the Wallaby Belgium Mega and the Park Asterix Blitz that are pulling negative 1 Gs, like, on every airtime moment pretty much. Uh, so that's, that's kind of disappointing. And I heard that it's 3.5 Gs. Um, pulling out of that, which is good. That's not bad. Uh, and then there's the zero G stall uh, roll. Uh, it's technically zero G roll, but it's, it's kind of like a stall as well. Um, that that stall inversion. Uh, I've heard that it only gives uh, negative point uh, two Gs, which is very disappointing. For uh, I've heard that Pantheons gives like a full negative one G, so uh, that's very disappointing. Uh, and then your wave turn. I've heard that gives zero point seven Gs. That's fairly good. Uh, that's that's like probably what most of the wave turns are like. Um, so that's gonna be nice, but. After that, I've heard that that, like, Outer Bank thing gives floaters, so that's kind of sad. Um, and then your Overbank gives 3.5 3 to 4 Gs, which is good, but, I mean, you have Millie pulling 4.5 Gs for much longer. Uh, and you have I-305, you can't forget about that either. Um, and then you have so many other Intamins, Skyrush, uh, that, that are so intense. Um, you know, there, there's lots of Intamins uh, that are really intense, Exhibition G-Force. Um, these new Intamins coming out, too, Pantheon looks like it's, it's pretty intense. Uh, so that's kind of disappointing, but it's not, like, super disappointing. Then I heard that this airtime pop only gives floater, which is really sad. Uh, because Wallaby Belgium Mega literally gives, like, some of the strongest ejector on some of those uh, quick little airtime pops. And then uh, you have the Heartland Roll, which, by the way, it doesn't really look like it whips through that fast. You're only going 45 miles an hour. Um, I heard through it 45 to, like, 50, so that's kind of sad. And after that, you have your, um, you have, like, your S Bend or whatever. That looks nice. Um, pretty snappy, but... Um, that's really disappointing for the second half. Um, you know, like rides like Pantheon, which Pantheon is short. It probably only has like the same amount of elements as Velocicoaster's second half. Um, Pantheon does much better. Um, that's why I think Pantheon's actually a better ride. Uh, Velocicoaster just seems to struggle in the pacing a little bit too. Um, like the, the elements don't really look like they, they hit either. Uh, there's kind of like a lot of like open space between the elements, uh, which is kind of sad. Like there's just a lot of these like turns in between the elements where Pantheon pretty much wastes no time getting in the elements, and other rides like Wallaby Belgium Mega Coaster especially um, doesn't waste any time. It doesn't waste any track at all. Um, so it kind of has like a lot of dead spots, and the first half looks very disappointing as well. Um, like, not disappointing. Like, this ride, guys, it looks it looks top 50 in the world. Um, not top 25 in the world, like people say. Not number one in the world, like some people say. Um, but the first half, you know, everyone's raving about the second half, so... That means the first half is not nowhere near as good as that, so that's kind of disappointing. So overall, I don't think this coaster is bad, but there's people that say this coaster is like top, top one in the world, top ten in the world, top, top twenty-five in the world is acceptable. But like, there's people saying that this ride's gonna be the best in the world, 
And I'm just telling you, it, it won't. Like, it, it just physically won't. Maybe for some people, but the forces are really kind of not impressive. And there's a lot of dead spots, and the pacing is doesn't really look like it's that good. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to wait till this thing actually opens. But for now, I think it's very overhyped, and I think people need to, like, look at the forces on this ride. Moving on to the other uh, Blitz Coaster opening in the U.S. soon, uh, Pantheon. I think this ride is underhyped. Not very underhyped, uh, but it's pretty underhyped. Uh, there are some people that agree with me that this ride is, like, top 25 in the world for sure. Um, this ride, it, it might be a little short, uh, but every element hits, even the beginning elements. Really, the worst element, uh, besides those, like, S-turns before the first launch, um, is that zero-G um, roll after the first launch. And, the, and then the, um, the, the reverse spike as well, because obviously, like, that's not going to do anything. The vertical spike... Uh, that's not going to do anything, um, but every other element hits, and there's great transitions between the elements. Uh, there's some there's some nice ones, um, you know the top hat uh, 95 degrees without the holding brake that's going to give some nice airtime. Um, but you have another turn after that that's going to provide some bone crushing positives. I uh, probably have something like Sky Rush's first turn, uh, but probably sustained for even longer. Um, after that, you're gonna get you're gonna go into the outer bank. That's probably the best outer bank ever. Um, probably both. Definitely better than Wallaby Belgium Megas. Um, and then after that, you're going to take the... You're going to have this, like, nice little airtime transition thing. And not really anything special. But, see, like, they have a transition instead of just throwing in a, like, a, like a turn that takes forever, like a Velocicoaster. And then you have your stall, which... And that's going to be, like, the best moment of hang time in the world. And it's the pacing is going to keep up the whole time. And then you have that little S-turn thing that looks like it's going to snap your neck off. Uh, and then you have the wave turn as well, which... Doesn't really look like it's like too good, but it's it's gonna be a nice moment. And then you also have the uh, the outer banks before the the launch, uh, the second launch. Those look like they're gonna provide some at least good airtime, um, probably like uh, 0 0.75 G's or something like that, which is that's nice. And then you have uh, the the airtime hill and the step down on the launch. Uh, so you're you're gonna get some uh, over negative one G's on that. So that Pantheon. Has great stats. It's short, but every element looks like it hits, uh, and the pacing looks uh, phenomenal. So yeah, Pantheon I feel like is is underhyped for sure. Next up we have the Wallaby Bel uh, Belgium Mega. I think this is slightly underhyped. If you don't know, I think this is the best coaster in the world. But a lot of people either think it's the best coaster in the world as well or don't. Um, but I can't say it's fairly hyped because you know hyped fairly because there's a lot of people that don't think it's the best in the world, but uh, a lot, I think I think a lot of people do um, do see like that this ride's like a top five coaster in the world, top ten in the world. Um, but yeah, I'm not even just gonna go into this ride because you know we all know it's got like the best airtime in the world, pretty much. You, you can't really deny that anymore. I don't think, um, and it's got so much more. It's, it's got great pacing, great positives, great whip, great transitions. Um, it does everything so well. So it's a long ride too. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna go into this ride anymore. Um, but I, I will say that there is some haters, so that's why it's gonna be. Uh, slightly underhyped. Park Asterix Blitz. I think this is underhyped. I think this is flying under the radar just because it's so much in the future. But I've heard like I haven't really heard people think this is that good. Like I've heard some people like not even put this in the top fifty and like their top hundreds and stuff. Uh, but this looks like a like a toned down version of Pantheon, but like longer. Um, so yeah, that's good. Uh, the the airtime is like not as strong as Wallaby Belgium Mega or Sustain, but. Um, it's still still really good, uh, still great airtime, uh, and I think this is a top five coaster in the world. Um, I think lots of other people still know like it's like top twenty five in the world and stuff, so that's why it's not very overhyped or underhyped. Um, but it definitely deserves more attention because it looks like a great ride, and it looks like a ride that is an enthusiast dream. And yet, uh, lots of people are just just kind of throw this ride uh, aside and um, don't really think this ride's gonna be that good. Which, and I mean, the stats don't lie. Intamin literally gave us the stats for this ride, and they're they're very impressive. Uh, not as impressive as like you know Wallaby Belgium Megas with like that airtime, but uh, they're still above average airtime. It's going to be a great airtime on this ride, um, and and everything else. The whip is obviously amazing. I mean, it's a it's a blitz coaster, so that's it's going to be great in that department as well. And the pacing, I mean, it's it's also a blitz coaster, like I said. So yeah, but I think it's I I think it's underhyped for sure. And that might be because it's you know it's so far out there. Um, Obviously, it's not even in America, and it's opening in 2023, so... Um, but I do think it's underhyped. Next up, we have Iron Gwazi, uh, and I think this is hyped fairly. Normally, I think an RMC would get too much hype, um, but this and, like, Hakugi, uh, really, I think... Well, Hakugi was just underhyped, and everyone realized that, but this, I think, is hyped fairly. 
um, because people were realizing that this, you know this ride, it's not gonna have the most airtime in the world. Um, it's just only gonna have like a few great moments of airtime. Uh, but, but the but the, but, the uh, but the people are re realizing that uh, the pacing is great on this ride, and it, it is a shorter ride. People are not realizing it's the longest ride in the world. Um, but it's um, the the pacing is gonna be really uh, good as well, and um, people people also see that this ride might have some amazing whip um, and then like death roll and then some maybe even some positives as well so i think people will see this ride for what it is uh top 25 in the world um for sure probably not top 15 maybe i don't know but it's definitely close like it's definitely like top 20 i'd say um so i, th I think people will see this ride for uh what it is not an absolute airtime machine um but you know a combination of everything and that's the rides i i like just it's some rides do it a lot better, uh, but Iron Gwazi does it really well, and that's why I think it's hyped fairly, because um, lots of people are actually uh, seeing that uh, with this ride. Uh, I don't really know. I actually know some people that don't even, uh, a lot of people don't even think this is the best in Florida anymore after Velocicoaster, and then there are some people that do think this is the number one, so I, I overall, overall think it's hyped pretty fairly. Next up, we have Jersey Devil Coaster. I think this is very underhyped. Um, Lots of people are saying this is even top 100 in the world, uh, or just complete garbage. Uh, this this looks like the best coaster in the park uh, to me. Uh, it's got okay, like the pacing probably isn't as good as like the original Raptor clones, but the pacing is still phenomenal. It's an RMC Raptor. It still flies through its layout, and you don't have to be a twister layout to have great pacing. Uh, there is great rides with uh, great rides that uh, rides that have great pacing that are uh, out and backs too. Uh, you don't have to be you know, super, like, compact and twisty to have, uh, to have great pacing, and this ride still looks like it's gonna have great pacing, um, it looks like it combines, uh, some nice positives, uh, nothing, like, over the top, though, um, obviously great airtime, I honestly think it will be the best airtime in the park, El Toro, I think, will have the strongest airtime in the park, but Jersey Devil has so much more moments, and they're not that far off, um, people act like Intamin, uh, or, like, El Toro's airtime, and, like, ride, like, Wicked Cyclone or Storm Chaser's airtime is, like, really far off, but they're both strong, no, they're not that far off, I mean, like, yeah, duh, El Toro's is stronger, um, but, like, not that much, and I think Jersey Devil is gonna even improve on the airtime from those two RMCs I mentioned, and it's got great hang time and great inversions, um, you know, RMC inversions are, and they're always good, um, and it's, it's got whippy moments as well, um, you know, not as much as, like, the, the Raptor, or, like, the Raptor clones, but it's still got some whippy, uh, moments, it's not short, I don't think it's short on, like, the Raptors, so, I mean, yes, if it was like the short as the rap as the original RMC Raptors, then yes, it would be a worse ride. But it's not. It's like twice as long. Over, I, I, like I think it is, um, actually over twice as long. Uh, and I think it will be a great ride. Probably best in the park. Um, probably like top thirty in the world. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a great ride. Uh, this probably is gonna be like the sleeper sleeper hit. Um, I really. I, I mean, I I guess I can see why people are shoving it off, but I think you'll be surprised by this ride. Next up, we have Abyssus. I think this is slightly underhyped. Um, some people really aren't paying attention to this ride, but it looks good. Probably top ten in the world to me. Uh, the trim didn't really, the trim on the the top hat really didn't look like it killed the ride at all, which was the only thing I was worrying about. But uh, it didn't really kill the ride at all. The second half is amazing. Uh, the first, like you know, not really half. It's more like a, the first quarter of the ride. Uh, the first, everything after the first launch up until the second launch um, is filler, but. It honestly looks like it could provide possibly, like, ejector uh, and some, like, nice whippy transitions as well. Like, it doesn't look like it's going to be bad either. And I think some people are just like, oh, yeah, just skip that part. It's just completely awful. It does nothing. No. It's going to be, like, a long, like, souped-up RMC pre-lift pretty much. Um, so, yeah, that, that's not going to be awful, though. Um, and then the second half looks phenomenal. Um, but there's a lot of people that think this is top 10 in the world, top 25 in the world. So that's why it's not really, like, underhyped or very underhyped. Um, but there are some people... Uh, a lot of people that really uh, aren't the biggest fans uh, of this ride, and I mean, I got I, this is one I can see why. But uh, personally, I think this ride uh, looks really uh, good. It looks like it does everything very well, um, especially in the second half. Um, really, the second half is where it starts doing everything very, very well. Uh, the airtime, uh, the whip, the positives, the pacing, um, phenomenal in the second half. Um, second half is pretty much like a super version of Lek Coaster. However, I think Lek is better because Lek um, sustains it for longer. Lek, you know, it's it's, it's a it, Lek doesn't have the uh, the first half that Abyssus has, or like after the first launch, um, and and that that just makes and Lek has more of this, you know, like the second half parts than Abyssus does. But Abyssus uh, looks very good. Um, definitely looks like a 
kind of like a drawn out like version of Lek, but like in a good way though, because like the positives and the airtime looks like more sustained, uh, which is one of Lek's problems. Nothing is really sustained on that ride. Um, so yeah. And this is, you know, a lot of people are giving it a fair hype, but there is some the, some haters out there, so that's why I'm saying it's slightly underrated or under under hyped, really, whatever, because no one's have, no one's ridden it yet, just tested. Uh, all right, so um, next we have FLY at Fantasia Land. Uh, really, whenever this opens, I mean, it just hasn't opened, so that's why it makes the video. Um, but I think this is overhyped, uh, not very overhyped, because people are not realizing that this is like you know an outstanding coaster, um, but. There's people that say this is like, you know, top 50 in the world. There's some people that say that. Um, so, and this coaster is definitely not. Uh, I love flying coasters uh, to death. I love absolutely love Manta. Um, I, I love Firehawk too. Firehawk was absolutely amazing. Um, it's still in my top 25, both of those rides. Uh, and even Superman Ultimate Flight is a really good ride. Um, the pretzel loop is just really good. So, you think with Fly, I'd be really excited. And I am. I am really excited for this ride. Uh, the launch looks amazing, not because it's, like, intense launch, but because it's a launch on a flying coaster. That just looks like a dream come true. Um, I have always wanted that. Um, and some of the inversions look good, like that corkscrew you can see there. And some of the turns look kind of intense. Um, and the theming obviously looks good. But, and the near misses as well. But this coaster's pacing really is lacking. Um, and it really, really doesn't look like it, it like, you know, does too much. Um, none of the moments really look, like, spectacular besides that corkscrew, um, and maybe, like, that turn, um, turn you can see right there as well, um, but I, I, I don't even think that either. I think that really the corkscrew is only the, really the only major, uh, moment on this ride. Uh, there could be some other whippy moments, but it, it's not gonna really have, like, anything, like, intense, like, you know, like a pretzel loop or anything, which is very disappointing, um, it's just... It's just not going to be that type of ride. Um, it's kind of going to be like, you know, just like a, and not really like a, like a family version of like a flying coaster, but it's not going to like have those like super intense moments. It's just going to be gliding around. Uh, it's not going to like, not going to be like super slow, but it's just, it's just going to be a bit more graceful, uh, I'd say. But I could be wrong, but uh, from like the animations or like the, you know, like the renderings and stuff, um, it just doesn't really look like it's, it's going to like do all that much, to be honest. Um, so that's why I don't think... It might be top 100 in the world, but I don't think so. And there's a lot of people that agree with me, but, you know, there's some people that agree with me, but a lot of people think that this is going to be, like, even top 50 in the world. So that's why I'm going to say it's it's overhyped, but you, you you don't know. Maybe this coaster would pall or something, so we have no clue. But still, it looks like a great ride. Next up, we have Wrath of Zeus, and this one I also think is overhyped. Not very overhyped, because people realize that, you know, this ride isn't, like, too great. Uh, and I think this ride would be an amazing ride, but the trim break absolutely kills this ride. Um, it, it turns this, the, the rest of the ride into nothing, and the trim breaks at the very beginning. So, um, and the ride doesn't look bad. Uh, there definitely looks like there's some uh, good moments on this ride, but if it didn't have the trim break, uh, it'd basically be like abysses. Um, so that's how much of a difference th this trim can make, because this trim like pretty much stops the ride. Um, halfway down the top hat, like the front car is like halfway down the top hat, it absolutely kills uh, this ride. But this ride shows some great elements. Um, but a lot of people just uh, think these elements are like m really good uh, and everything, you know, like or like, very very spectacular and the pacing is amazing. But it's really not. I think the trim really kills everything. But the, there is some people out there that do realize that the trim exists, uh, so that's why it's not um, very overhyped. Um, and it's probably not top 100 in the world, though, but it is pretty overhyped. And uh, RCDB says this isn't open. I'm not sure if it is, you know, tested. I'm not sure, but still, like, probably no enthusiast has written it, even if it is. So um, that's why I'm, I'm including it here. But, yeah, trim, if they didn't have the trim break, uh, it would be one of the best coasters. Um, not out there, but it would be, like, a great coaster, uh, like, top 25 in the world. But uh, the trim break really killed everything, and it doesn't really... Maybe even if the trim break wasn't there, it wouldn't be good. But the pacing just looks like twice as bad as Let Coaster, and like when I mean twice as bad, that's because Let Coaster is like some of the best pacing out there. Uh, but it just kind of looks like it doesn't really like fly through any of the elements or anything, and the elements look good, but like nothing spectacular. Uh, but it is a long ride, but it just looks very uh, overhyped from some people who just assume every Vacoma is great because of Let Coaster, uh, and that's unfortunately not the truth. Uh, this is, doesn't really look like a great uh, model. Uh, really, really because of the trim. If the trim wasn't there, it'd be amazing, but 
no, the trim is, so. Next up, we have uh, Time Traveler. Uh, not Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, which is the exact same model, the Mac uh, Spinning Ghost here, but Time Traveler at Plopsaland in Belgium. And I've actually heard from some people that this is going to be the best coaster in Belgium. This is like their most hyped coaster. Uh, I've heard from some people this is going to be the best coaster in Europe. They think that. Um, and no. Uh, this ride is definitely a step up from Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, uh, which I didn't think was top 100 anyways. Um, but this might not even be top 100 either. And some people are saying this is going to be like top 25 in the world and stuff. Um, and even higher than that, I know some, like I said, I, I've heard some people that think this is going to be the best coaster coming in 2021, um, and that's not going to be the case. Uh, this ride doesn't really look like it has any airtime, and the people are like, uh, well, I mean, like, the second half that might have some airtime, but, like, I don't think this ride will have any ejector, and some people are like, oh, the drop, it's just going to be, like, time travelers. Well, I've heard that time travelers airtime, the time travelers drop out of the station doesn't even have any airtime, so that's, it's kind of disappointing. Um, and the banana roll, people are going crazy over that. I'm... Guys, I've experienced a banana roll. Well, the one in Steel Curtain, which is debatable if it's a banana roll or not. Um, and it's not that good. It's, like, one of the worst inversions on the ride. It's still great, but it's, like, nothing spectacular. Um, and then, like, the zero-G rolls and, like, this, whatever this element is, which is not a flying snake dive, by the way. Um, it's not going to give you any airtime going into it. That looks good. That looks probably, like, the best element on the ride. But um, the ride kind of looks a little short. Like, not short, but it just doesn't look, like, long either. Um... And it really only has, like, a few great elements. And the pacing isn't even, like, that good. I mean, the spinning is definitely going to help the ride, but it won't save the ride. Um, like, some people, I think, think it will. Um, so, that's why I think it's it's very overhyped. But maybe I could be wrong. Maybe because I've never even ridden Extreme Mac or Time Traveler or anything like that. So, I wouldn't know. But it, to me, it just looks very, very overhyped. But it looks like a great ride, though. Next up, we have Emperor. And I never thought I'd say this about a B&M dive, um, but I I have to say it's slightly underhyped. Um, B&M dive coasters really don't impress me. Even ones without the vest restraints just look pretty dumb. But Emperor, um, the, the, like, people are saying, like, oh, the worst dive in America. But I honestly think it's going to be the best dive in the United States. Um, and this is because the inversions look like they give great hang time. Uh, and they also look very intense, specifically the second inversion right here. Uh, and the, the, all the elements really after the Immelman up until the break run um, don't look spectacular, uh, but they all look like fun inversions that provide something that not really B&M dive coasters, like something that B&M dive coasters really, really can't provide. Um, so the, the inversions and the turns actually look pretty uh, nice on this ride, pretty whippy. And some of them are actually like pretty whippy. And then some of them great hang time, some positives in there too. So uh, they just look like nice, uh, nice inversions. Like I said, nothing spectacular, but people are really like hating on this ride or just not giving this ride any attention. But I think it deserves a little more than we've been giving it because it doesn't look all too bad. It looks like it actually has some nice elements. Yes, it might be the shortest dive coaster in America. Don't let the uh, stats fool you because this, the ride's second half uh, looks pretty, pretty good. Next up, we have Monster at Groenland and. I, like, I don't know, like, I'm not even, like, a big B&M fan, but I think everyone's really just hating on these B&Ms this year, um, but this, yeah, this, this ride looks underhyped, I think that's because I like Banshee, maybe, but, uh, this ride looks like a mini Banshee, um, and I think people are really annoyed with the best restraints, they don't really detract the, from the ride that much, uh, and this ride doesn't really have any, like, you know, like, traditional inversions that are, like, kind of bland, uh, all these inversions look like very like floaty and fun and stuff, and like they're like the that junior Immelman or whatever the heck they call it. That looks like it's gonna give some positives. It looks like there's even some airtime moments. All oh, that turn too, um, or that that turn uh, right next to the junior Immelman or whatever. Uh, that looks like it's gonna be uh, great. This ride doesn't look like spectacular. It looks like a mid tier invert, but uh, honestly, this ride keeps growing on me. It actually looks like it might have have some intense moments, like Banshee. Um, but it won't really be whippy either. That's why it won't be higher. But um, Banshee's the favorite, my favorite invert, um, pretty much by far, um, because it's it's very intense and the intensity is very sustained. And I don't think this ride will match it, but it'll it'll try to mimic it. And people are really shoving this ride off, saying it's going to be one of the worst inverts, um, and they're really mad it's going to have the vests. And I'm not really mad about any of that. I think it's very underrated. But you know, it's not going to be anything super spectacular. So that's why not, that's not why it's very underhyped. But I'm going to put it at underhyped because uh, this ride definitely needs a lot more attention. Next up, we have Leviathan at um, SeaWorld in Australia. And uh, I'm going to say this ride's very underhyped. I just rode my first Gravity Group Voyage, and it is overrated. But 
Um, I, I think it's just not like personally like the type of ride to be like top three in like my list, but I, it's a spectacular ride still. Uh, now I see what gravity groups are all about, and people were saying this ride like was gonna be like one of the worst gravity groups. Like there isn't really that much hype about this ride, but probably because people are shoving it off because they don't think it's that good of a ride. But the people that have said something about that say it's like gonna be like. You know, like, not even, like, as good as, like, the Jungle Trailblazers and stuff. Uh, but I think this ride is going to be probably better than those. Uh, looks like it has lots of airtime moments. Looks like it's very long. And, I'll, I'll, like, these airtime moments just look, like, a lot better than uh, most of the Gravity Groups. It looks like probably the best new Gravity Group, I'm going to say that. Um, because it has lots of great transitions, which Gravity Group always does, which I really like. Um, and, and it has lots of, uh, it has tons of airtime moments. Probably, like, the most airtime moments on, like, on, like, one one of these, like, newer, like, giant gravity groups, it is a lot, and they're not going to be spectacular, but they're going to be good, and a lot of people are just saying that this ride really won't be that good, and there's also the backwards uh, seat as well, so that's going to be a uh, great, but overall, I just think this ride's very underhyped, maybe because it's far away, maybe because, I don't know, uh, but I just feel like this ride is going to be very underhyped. Now, we also, Sandy's Bl Blasting Bronco now, I think this ride is slightly overhyped, uh, some people are saying this ride is going to be good. It's just going to be nothing special. So that's why it's overhyped. Don't really need to explain. This ride should have opened now, but didn't. So that's why it's on this list. But uh, it's some people are saying this ride is going to have some great stuff, but not really. But I think most people know what to expect. And lastly, they have Primordial. Hyped fairly. Uh, people are saying it's going to be a an, an nice interactive dark ride, similar to Wonder Mountain Guardian. And I think the same. I'm pretty sure everyone thinks the same. Uh, it's just going to be a nice fun ride. Nothing special at all. Nice family coaster. So hyped fairly. And we have Falcon's Flight, which is very, very, very underhyped. Uh, this thing looks amazing. It's going to kill people. Um, no, I'm just, just no. Uh, this thing's not even going to open. So, um, But you, you guys, really, could I even go uh, a video? Could I even do a video without uh, about future coasters without talking about this ride? I, you know, I couldn't, so that's why I had to do it. But anyways, uh, summary on the, the list. So in our very overhyped category, we had Velocicoaster and Time Traveler. In our overhyped category, we had Fly and Wrath of Zeus. In our slightly overhyped category, we had only Sandy's Blasting Bronco, only one for that one. In our fairly hyped category, we had Iron Gwazi and Primordial. In our slightly underhyped category, we had Wellby, Belgium, Mega, and Abyssus. In our underhyped category, we had Pantheon, Park Asterix, Blitz, and Monster. So um, that one had a lot, that had three. In our very underhyped category, we had Jersey Devil and Leviathan. So what this tells us is that I think um, the, a little bit more of the rides are actually underhyped than overhyped. Uh, and I think this year is going to be great, by far the best year for coasters ever. And this is just half the coasters we're going to get this year because there's going to be so much more coming out soon. Um, but overall, this is the list. So uh, that's going to be it for the video, too. So thanks for watching. Comment down below what you think about these rides. Uh, what what you uh, Do you agree with the hype on these rides or not? How do you think they're... Uh, uh, how do you, uh, do you, like, what do you think about the, the hype of these rides, and what do you think about these rides in general? Uh, so, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you at Doozies later.